All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day or evening or afternoon, whatever it is. Um, it's been a bit chilly and grey today here. And um, yeah, I didn't have the best night's sleep. So I've been pushing to find some extra gratitude in the this morning. But um, these are the times where it's even more necessary, I believe, those days where it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Um, Change this around. Sorry, babe. There we go. Other partner just brought me some food as she just walked in the door at the same time I started, but unfortunately it's leaking. <laughs> and now I have sauce on my desk, which is getting everywhere. Anyway. Never mind me. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> hope you're having a fantastic morning. Um, for those Americans, I hope you enjoyed Thanksgiving yesterday and found lots of thanks and lots of gratitude. And um, for those of you that weren't on the call, I was finding gratitude and saying that this is a perfect time to appreciate those loved ones you have, um, especially mothers, being firsthand on the sidelines of seeing what motherhood is like now. I definitely... Um, have a lot of gratitude for all mothers out there. And I think it's, if you didn't send a message yesterday, send one today. It's never too late just to thank you, mum. I'm a big mama's boy. And uh, yeah, it's incredible what you ladies do. Um, today, I'm also finding some gratitude in the small things, in the sense of extra hours of sleep. <laughs> it was a bit of a rough one last night with the little one. Um and so I'm finding the gratitude for those extra hours that we do get when we get them and um, not being disappointed at not getting enough sleep last night, but being grateful when I do get extra sleep, like hopefully tomorrow morning. So please chuck in the chats what um, you're grateful for today. How is your um, Thanksgiving? If you celebrated it, what did you do yesterday? I know there was a public holiday for trading. So lots of our traders had the day off. Um, hopefully you got up to something exciting. Had a slightly smaller group yesterday, but we went through some really quality stuff um, with Deanna. So I'll share that with you in a little bit. Um, today is Friday, so we're going to do a bit of a Friday recap. But to start with, let's see, read some of this gratitude. Good morning. Grateful for hope in someone I love who is fighting addiction. Yes, well, I send hope to them as well. Addiction can be extremely hard. Um, I've had some close friends and relatives go through that and it's a battle so all the best good morning to all i'm grateful to be getting up to a warm home a wonderful partner and looking forward to the day lovely we have some more gratitude i know we've got a few more people on here than just the two like i said finding gratitude is a practice it takes intention and repetition um, and it can indeed change your life i find even in the hard days when i'm struggling to find gratitude forcing myself to actually write down a few things and um, note a couple of those small things, even if it's just the same stuff that I regularly find gratitude in, it starts the process and it can really um, shift my mood quickly when I realize that I'm just being silly or petty or any of those things, you know, finding that gratitude is like, ah, what am I doing? Why am I holding on to a grudge? You know, what is it? That lovely quote, um, I can't never remember who it's by because I think it's said it many times, but if I give you a present and you refuse to accept it, who does the present belong to? Who knows, right? Well, if I present you with anger and you refuse to accept it, who does the anger belong to? Obviously, it's a bit subjective, but most of the time you'd understand that if the other person is not willing to accept your anger or frustration, you're the one holding on to it. So often when we're frustrated at little things or angry at someone else or holding a grudge, it's really not doing anything apart from affecting ourselves. And it's a negative trait and it's a negative behavior um, that can drain our energy, not improve our energy. And um, I think it's very powerful to accept this. And um, like we were talking about before, do you have a problem? Yes. Can you do something about it? Yes. Then why worry? It's the same thing if you've got an issue with someone or if you've got a problem or a grudge that you're holding on to. And I'm using this because I was holding a grudge yesterday. This is the only reason why I'm 
I'm saying it. Um, but it's kind of one of those things you have to take a step back and be like, okay, I've got an issue. Am I going to move to this person and present it and discuss it? No. Then why hold on to it? Am I going to move to this person, present it and discuss it? Yes. Okay. Well, then continue doing that. Don't worry about it and don't hold on to it. And same for if you do you have a problem. Yes. Are you going to continue? No. Then why hold on to it? It's the exact same thing. So finding gratitude, forcing yourself into doing it and actually starting that process is a really good practice into letting those, you know, that mind shift, mind shift, mindset shift. I'll get there eventually into the positive and letting go of those little things that we often find ourselves holding on to. That's where that story was going a bit long winded, but I got there in the end. A few more bits of gratitude coming through today. I'm grateful for a productive day and a transforming mind through practicing gratitude and being patient. There we go. I'm grateful for the environment around me and the people that make it so great. Love it. I'm grateful for strong communication and decent Wi-Fi, my ability to adapt, accept, and problem solve. Yeah. Tell you what, after living in Mexico for um, 10 months, I really appreciate the Wi-Fi here in Germany. It's amazing the difference it makes when you're a full-time online entrepreneur and, and trader. Reduces a bit of stress, let me tell you that. Okay, so just recapping the week. Today, we have been talking about relationships, right? We have been talking about relationships, not with others. Well, we've been talking about relationships with others. We've been talking about relationship with circumstances and objects, and we've been talking about relationship with self, more importantly. So remember, I think it was Monday, I was talking about the golden circle, but with circumstances, time, money, with others friends, loved ones, and then with self and, and where we find our excuses and often skipping right past the, the others and the circumstances and going straight to self is the best way to move forward um, with problems or with decisions or any other thing of the sort. Um, we're then talking about our relationship with money, which is quite important as traders. I feel like this is a very strong one um, for those traders out there who are either finding a lot of greed or a lot of fear in in your trading and we have to really dig deep and that's what we spoke about on Wednesday and trying to find and analyze certain values that we may have towards money and beliefs and certain I guess I was going to say relationships but I guess behaviors that we've picked up along the way from people that we have um, grown up with being taught by being mentored by and really understanding where that comes from and what things we like about it, what things we don't like about it and how we can shift that. So did anyone after Wednesday um, have a bit of a deep dive and discover some areas that they, I would say could improve on or got a better understanding of where their relationship with money came from or comes from? If you did, please chuck it in the chat or just chuck a one in the chat if you did some deeper diving and if you found some answers and if you're willing to share it, that'd be great. If not, that's fine too. Sure. So we got some people who took a little bit um, of a deeper dive and found some deeper understanding, which is good. And I think lots of the times we might have these, I'm going to call them roadblocks or beliefs and values, which I use this word a lot on this call, um, related to money or to ourselves or to relationships with, let's say, parents or, or friends or partners. And we struggle to break through these barriers and often it's just a matter of diving deeper and finding out where they come from and kind of how do you say discovering the origin let's say that allows us to actually break through them and for most of the things that we discuss or that i will discuss on the, these calls and, and going into the future it's it's what is the issue and why do we have it as to how we can then change it I know where it comes from. It's healing it. I've been working on it for the last two and a half years. Great. I love it. I mean, every every step is progress. And I think the more we understand it, the easier we can heal or redevelop or reestablish, let's say, um, that relationship or those beliefs or those values that we have with whatever it is. And, you, you know, that can be, like I said, with self. It can be your relationship with money. It can be your relationship with your parents. It could be your relationship with, in, you know, your romantic relationships. Sometimes you might find that you're always finding yourself with the same people. 
and you're like, why the fuck have I got up with the same dickhead again? <laughs> like it's been a year and it just turns out you're the same person. You know, it's strange that we have these recurring behaviors and it's noticeable and you can pick it up and you go, why, why, why? And I think once you start asking yourself why you have these behaviors or these relationships or these roadblocks, um, that's when you need to start digging deeper. And this is what I talk about is peeling back those layers and really diving within. And this is where the seven, like the your why can help because you really start to understand um, yourself a little bit more and what drives you. And really everything comes down to just digging a bit deeper and understanding yourself and understanding the beliefs and values that you hold within and where they've come from. And once we can start doing that, like I said, we can shift our life in any single direction. And I think this is why relationships as a whole are so important and and you might find that you've got toxic relationships with some aspects but really healthy relationships with others and that some things are draining your energy and some things are providing your energy and it's not about just doing what society says you should do and sort of you know have i don't know let's say for example in western australia um you grow up lots of friends go out on the weekend and have a big house and that's kind of the dream of living i'm sure that's the same across canada and america and england and lots of the western cultures but you don't just have to do that just because that's what the other people are doing you know you got to look within and find out what your relationship is you might not want a big house like for me i like tiny houses i don't need giant mansions that's not who i am and so when my friends are talking about oh, i gotta get a bigger house bigger house that's the least of my worries and least of my desires because I know from where I've come from and what I believe in, what my values are, they're completely different. And so that, that's because I understand the relationship that I have with myself or say material objects or say my living, my relationship with living. Um, and it makes you so much happier when you start to figure out you and your relationships and start living by them rather than trying to live by someone else's. And so just summing up the concept of relationships, I think for this week and why I brought it up is because Lots of the time, there's different levels of relationships. Like I said, toxic, healthy, mutual, transactional, non-transactional. Um, and if you can establish the kind of relationship you have with different areas of your life, you can start to really clear away some of that negative energy. You can really clear away some of that shit that you deal with that's unnecessary. And you can really start focusing on the things that mean a lot to you. You know, Look at the 10 people that you hang around with the most. Are they transactional relationships are they non-transactional relationships are they positive um, energy providing or energy draining relationships if you can ask yourself these questions and start going holy shit i've got six friends and all of them always want something from me and they're actually kind of annoying and i've got two that are really good that i want to hang out with and the other two that yeah whatever you know you can start to curb your environment and you can start to change the inputs that you have because I'm sure you've heard it many times before. We are the sum of the five people we hang around with and we are the sum of our environment. Um, and all these kind of sayings and cliche sayings come from the fact that there's truth within them. And so really establish the relationships you have, how they value or increase or decrease your life and whether it's worth starting to shift them. So that's kind of my summary of the week and relationships that I've been discussing. They don't have any questions on that or anything they'd like to add or provide um, to the group with more information. If you have the question, the answer is within. Very good, Lorraine, exactly. And so we have no more comments on that. I'll just, just touch briefly on what we're talking about yesterday, which was um, the comfort, let's say comfort zones. So starting with your comfort zone in the middle, and then moving to that fear zone, which is kind of where you have to build up the motivation and do something and get a little bit nervous and a little bit angsty and try and break out of that zone. And then you start learning. You start learning something new. Um, and once you start learning something new and start consistently doing it and developing that skill um, and taking action, which is the key word here, then you start to go into that growth zone. And... The growth zone is the place you want to be. It's the place where all the good things happen. Um, and it's something to take note that this isn't just a one-step process. This is an ongoing, ever-growing process because as you move into the growth zone, your comfort zone, 
starts to sort of expand. And as you keep learning, you've learned more things. If you don't keep learning, your comfort zone will just get bigger and then you're comfortable doing more things, but you're still not growing. And so this is why um, learning is extremely important. Never stop learning. As soon as you stop learning, you start dying. Can never remember who said that quote either, but it's a great one. Um, and more importantly, taking action of what you learn. So you can learn all day long, but if you don't actually do anything with the stuff you're learning about, then you're not going to be growing because it's that left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, learn, action, learn, action that actually moves you forward. You can go round and round in circles, learn everything you want, but if you don't take action on that, then it really becomes almost pointless information. And you can either take action by teaching it and sharing it to someone else who will make um, products or make what you're what you're learning um, you know, beneficial, I guess, to others, or you can actually take the action yourself. Um, so just keep in mind that when you are learning something, don't be surprised if you've been learning something for a year and a half, two years, and you're like, why the fuck isn't this working for me? But you're not actually doing any of the action or any of the work. You know, as traders... Um, now I want to be careful what I say here because as traders we can sit in the learning phase and be on a demo for years and years and years and then be like why haven't I making money from this but that's because there's that fear of actually trading with live money and now please don't get me wrong the reason I want to be careful with saying this is because you should only be jumping into a live account once you are very confident with your strategy and you've really got your emotions under wrapped and you've got your trading plan and you've got everything in line that will hopefully move you forward to becoming a, a better trader. But the mindset behind live trading and demo trading is different. And I've got people that I know who are like, oh man, I've been trading for five years and I'm still four years or whatever it is. And I'm still not making any money. It's like, yeah, but you put a hundred dollar live account open once you blew it. And now you're not trading live. Like, what do you expect? You know, it is a difference of actually taking action, but please. And I'm saying this with massive caution because I don't want everyone to go, you're right. Let's go throw our life savings into a, into a live account because that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm very much suggesting take it responsibly, um, but also make sure that you're taking action. Okay. So the last thing I want to say here, um, and this is something that I've often had struggle with. I want you to put some ones in the chat if you're like, on Monday, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. couple people couple people okay i mean put a two in the chat if you go i'm gonna do this and you get up right this second you'll do it straight away if you're that kind of person and if you are that's great like there's no judgment here i wish i was more like that to be honest but i know that i'm lying to myself when i say i'm like that i'm like i'd like to be like that but most of the time i'm like yep this is great i'm gonna get back in the gym you know i'm gonna stop drinking beers in the afternoon i'm gonna reduce my coffees and i'm gonna do all of that tomorrow or Monday, right? And um, it's kind of repeats itself because you get to Monday morning and the motivation has dwindled, right? And motivation comes from, what are the two words? Uh, motive and action. So it's a motive. It's when you have enough action to take, when you have enough action to take motive, I think I'm saying this right. So motivation is when you've got a reason basically to take action. And sometimes you'll be sitting there on a Thursday or a Friday and you're like, okay, you know, this week wasn't as progressive as I want, but next week I'm going to get right into it and I'm going to do all the things and I'm going to make change my life and it's going to be magical. And then you get to Tuesday and you're like, damn, I didn't do it yesterday. I got to do it today. And then it gets to Wednesday and you're like, okay, all right, I'm going to start. And then Thursday, you're like, all right, next week I'm, going to get into it and you just get stuck in this loop because I know I've been there many, many a time. It's the procrastinator in me. Day one or one day, the choice is yours. Yeah, exactly. So the reason I bring this up is because if you are like that, and there were a few ones in here, um, I want to try There's an idea that I came up with and it's worked quite well for me, except unfortunately for the last couple of weeks, except for today, I was a bit lazy again, but you know, I'm always growing and it's called the Friday Monday. So most of us traders, we look forward to Mondays more than Fridays, right? Because we can trade Monday through Friday and we love it. And then the weekend comes and the markets are closed. But most other people work, work um, look for Friday because the weekend's on and they don't have to work. And this kind of gave me that idea of most people 
have full energy on Friday and no energy on Monday. And I'm one of them, but I want to try and shift this. And so what I've started doing is all the stuff that I say I'm going to do on Monday. Okay, on Monday, I'm going to da-da-da-da-da-da-da. You do that on Friday. Because on a Thursday, you've got that energy. The weekend's coming. You're like, okay, yeah, the weekend's coming up. Like I've got a bit more energy. I've got the drive. I've got the passion. It's been a semi-productive week. So now I'm driven to actually get into the week. And then what you do, if you actually wake up on a Friday and do everything that you're meant to do on a Monday or all the things you're going to start, but just do them on the Friday, then you actually go into the weekend with a much higher level of energy, a much higher level of pride, a much better relationship with yourself. Because you're like, yeah, you know, I woke up, I went for my jog, I didn't have a coffee, you know, whatever it is that's good for you. And I'm actually feeling great. And then you go into the weekend and usually the demands are different and you're like, oh, this is like good feel. Like I did so well on Friday, like I finished the week strong. And this actually keeps the energy up all the way through the weekend. And then hopefully on Monday, well, it did for me on Monday, you can then go, yep, so I did the Friday and now I'm going to go into the Monday. And then what you can start to do is rather than going Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you actually go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and see if you can just do it on Monday. And then you go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and see if you can do it on Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and see if you can do it on Monday. And then you've got the whole week done. So it's actually kind of working backwards, but using, I guess, a, a brain hack of just like general energy that's it's in our environment to to make us feel better for doing the stuff that we said we were going to do because too often it gets to Monday and you're like, oh, the weekend was longer. You know, I didn't get a good sleep. Maybe I went out, whatever it was. So you're slow on Monday and you're like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Like what's one day, you know, day one or one day. The choice is yours, as Amy said, which I do like. So my point here is just turning your, your Friday into a Monday and rather than st- setting off your week, right, which is what most people suggest to do, you know, set off your week on a win, set off your weekend on a wind. And then, then you can get to Monday back. Oh, I had such a good weekend. Why was that? Because I had such a good Friday. Why was that? Because I killed my to-do list within the first like hour of the day. Like for me last Friday, all I said was I want to get up. I want to write two pages of my book and I want to go for a jog and have a shower by nine o'clock. And that was my list. It was very quite simple, quite small. And I crushed that. And nine o'clock, I was like, yes, I've smashed my to-do list for today. And I had the best couple of days just because of the little wins that you sort of have. You're like, yes, I made, made these little wins and I'm going to celebrate those little wins. and I'm going to give myself a pat on the back and I'm going to appreciate the work that I have done and not worry about all the other things on my to-do list that I want to have done by Monday or Tuesday. Is that making sense to anyone? It's something that I have been implementing that I've been enjoying. And I just thought I'd share that with you the Friday, Monday. It is the little things. Yep. Totally makes sense. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not just rambling on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> does make sense. does make sense. Appreciate your energy and time. Of course, I really appreciate your being here. So we did have a, well, I had a good week. Um, we had a couple of holidays. Well, we yesterday was a holiday for a lot of people and we had a break from our trading. Um, and now we're moving on for our traders into a, hopefully a group exercise, which I really like. So for the traders, I'll be seeing you in that. Um, for the people who are listening on the podcast, um, I look forward to hearing from you next week. And next week, we will actually be having next Friday. Um, there's been a couple of people who have reached out to me wanting to also help out, partake, or, you know, just kind of give to others and get involved. So next Friday, I'm sure lots of your traders know Morris. Um, Morris was on our trading calls quite a bit and he's um, gotten himself into public ske- speaking and him and his uh, public speaking partner um, have been in contact with me and they would also like to share some of their wisdom on mindset and personal growth. And so next Friday, we'll hopefully be listening, hearing from him and his um, speaking partner and then there's a couple of other people who have sort of made contact with me and I want to make this podcast this call whatever you want to call it a very open and learning based community where we can all help and share and have input and learn from each other you know like 
I'm basically learning from a bunch of different avenues and just sharing it with you who are here listening on the podcast or listening um, live. And so if you have bits and pieces you want to input, or if you've got a really big topic that you think lots of people might be able to benefit from, then get in contact with me and you can have, you know, you can run a call or or take, um, yeah, take it, take a call one time and share what you've got. I mean, this is definitely a growth based environment um, where everyone's welcome and, you know, Maybe you've wanted to speak in front of people or get get used to this public speaking kind of thing. Uh, you haven't had, haven't known how to start. You're more than welcome to reach out, and um, yeah, we can just go from there because I'm always learning from others, from everyone, no matter where you come from, background, age, race, gender, whatever it is. I'm always learning something from other people, and so yeah, if people have stuff they want to share and get involved, then I'm all for it. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap up the week. It's been another fantastic week. I love that we've still got a consistent flow of people showing up. In fact, we've had some growth, which is even better. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying just hanging out and finding more gratitude in myself and getting used to um, sharing basically my thoughts with you all. So I hope you all enjoy your weekend. For the traders, I will see you in a couple of minutes. But with that, I shall love you all and leave you. And we'll speak again next week. Bye.